Hey, Brent here with the second Q&A video where I answer your questions on freelancing, graphic design, and anything else you really have to ask me. The last video went uh, pretty well. I got some more questions in, so I figured why not go ahead and shoot the second video and, uh, you know, maybe hopefully we can keep this going every week or, or every other week. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and jump into your questions. The first question is from Walter Oscar Roth. That is at Studio Kiwi BE on Twitter. And he asks, what are your thoughts about collaborations and fellow graphic design studios? I think that collaborations are great um, in many aspects. You get different experiences with the people you get to work with, um, different experiences with the work you actually get to do. Because um, typically, uh, when you're working by yourself, you don't get those really large, maybe even corporate type or just large projects just by yourself. It is definitely possible, um, and you do see it all the time, but um, at least for me personally, I've had a few large um, design firm clients that I've worked with, and most of my of the biggest projects that I work on are for design firms. And then, you know, I always do some work with some other fellow designers here and there, and, you know, I get some help from other freelancers, like when I wrote my Start Your Freelance Career book, um, I got some proofreading help from uh, Devin and he's a he's a programmer and so I think overall collaborating is a great thing to do um, at least every once in a while I know a lot of people like mastermind groups and that's you know in a way of collaborating where you're kind of getting together with a group of people to work on something and to work through your own problems and that sort of stuff so collaborating and inter interacting with other people in general um, would, is a great idea just from the different kind of experiences um, a different point of views and all the stuff that you get to experience from that. I hope that answers your question. Um, I wasn't entirely sure how to answer it, so uh, hopefully it wasn't too vague. This next question comes from Dave Pastor, and he asks, is having a website really helpful? How important is it to have one? Great question. I personally think that having a website, it should be a necessity for every type of freelancer, whether you're a proofreader, writer, photographer, uh, graphic designer, or developer. Um, a website will definitely benefit you in the long run. Is it required? No, you can definitely set up a free portfolio website, but if you do go the step further and you know develop your own website or buy a theme and customize it to your liking, um, then you can definitely utilize that to your advantage. For example, for me, my website is my number one business asset. It's how I pull in traffic with my blog um, and then convert that traffic into uh, either like product sales or new clients or like a blog subscriber. And then it's also how I showcase my work. So it's kind of like my own little home online and I can really use it as a tool for my freelance business. Again, it's not required, but I would definitely and highly recommend that you try at some point setting up your own website um, to showcase your work or to blog or to do something to help Make it work for you, you know, to generate some something more than, you know, just being a brochure website or something. Let it pull in traffic and convert new clients or at least just showcase your work on a simple page. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. The third and final question comes from Lindsay Baker. I have been doing freelance full time for about four months now and I have tried different methods for finding new clients. I have been trying emailing and calling but haven't been getting real far with actually closing accounts. I'm considering actually cold calling and walking into companies that I may want to work with. What methods work best for you? And do you have any advice for me in the future? Uh, this is a great question, Lindsay, because I think every um, freelancer, especially those getting started, can relate to this. For me personally, I think word of mouth is where it's at. All the work you do, everyone you reach out to, there's nothing better than someone personally recommending your name and your services. So when I got started or when you know work's running low, I always reach out to past connections or even sometimes past clients, you know, asking if they have any other work that they need to help with or if they know of anyone that could use my services. And word of mouth is always is probably where I get most of my work from. And then the second best way I have found to getting work, um, is something I definitely need to even explore more in, is uh, case studies for your past work. For example, I did a logo for Esmeralda um, Portillo and it was uh, a hand-lettered vector logo or hand-lettered then vector logo. And what I did was I took that and did a very simple case study showing my process and then I put that on my blog as a blog post and as a portfolio piece and then I uploaded that to Dribbble and then I shared that throughout my Facebook and Twitter and all that. 
um, and you know, it got a few views. And from that, I had two new logo projects come in within the next day. And in my uh, brief, I always ask, you know, how'd you found out about me? And they said, I saw your logo on Twitter or I saw it on Dribbble or they, and, and then another person said, I saw your post on, I saw the new logo on Twitter. And then I really liked your process of, that you shared on your website. So I want you to do my logo. So, you know, sharing your process is something clients really like to see. And that's what I found really works for taking your past work and making it find the new work for you. Um, again, this is where your website can come in handy. Um, where you can take your past work, do case studies, and then have that, um, and then share that, bring in the traffic, and then have your case studies generate those new client leads for you. So, and with the cold calling, that is great. That's how I, that's how I get my work when it's running low most of the time, um, especially when I was getting started. Uh, the first and best thing to do is ask your friends and family if they know of anyone. And then, you know, it's a great idea to actually walk into a business or a company. You know, if you have a lot of local businesses around you, it, it could be a very smart decision to just walk in and introduce yourself, you know, shake some hands, talk to the manager, see how you can help and really provide value. Yeah, there are so many different ways to market yourself and to find new clients. Um, so that's what works best for me, word of mouth, um, and then case studies on my website. Um, and then the next would be cold calling, you know, just reaching out to everyone I possibly can to work with or that I'd like to work with. I think you're going about it the right way and I hope my uh, answer can really help you. That concludes this Q and A video. Um, I really hope you're able to pick up a few insights and you know, maybe it would help you in a couple areas. And if you have any questions whatsoever about freelancing, graphic design, about me personally, how I run my business, anything at all, leave a comment here or let me know on Twitter at Brent Galloway. So again, thank you very much for watching. You can like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one. Um, of course, leave your comment with your thoughts or the question for the next Q&A. Or maybe if you'd like to see a different video entirely on you know, the ranting about something or literally anything, I'm open to any and all suggestions. So yes, thank you again and have a great day.